Good afternoon, what are you saying? Welcome back to Salty Lux, your front row seat to extreme underwater diving adventure, spare fishing, and all things under the sea. Guys, I'm here today at Von D. Mizzle, Eula Johnson State Park. I'm gonna go out with the South Florida beach divers. We're going to enter the Eurojax dive site. It's a bunch of concrete jacks. It's a really great site. There will be no sparing of fish today simply because we are leaving from the state park and spare fishing is prohibited. But there is a chance of seeing some lobster. So I'm gonna go with my lobster snare and I also am going to walk with the um, lionfish spare because although there's no sparing allowed, you can still spare lionfish. I don't know if there's going to be any there, but you never know. So I'm going to take the spare with me and we'll see what happens. I'll see you guys down there. There have been a few changes since the last time I did this dive. We used to have to lug our equipment to the beach, which according to Google Earth is about 200 yards, and then along the shoreline another 300 yards to get to the Dania Beach Eurojax dive site. There is still a walk of course, however a trail to the jacks has been created right at the end of the bridge. Gravity and unsure footing makes it a lot harder to walk when you're carrying 50 pounds on your back. So this is definitely a welcomed improvement. Here is the first sign directing you to the jacks and it indicates we are 0.2 miles away. Let's talk a little history. The park is named for civil rights movement leaders who led wade in protests to desegregate South Florida beaches in the 1950s and 60s. It was once Broward County's designated colored beach. Now, the park is a popular location for swimming, fishing, boating, hiking, bicycling, and picnicking, offering a haven where everyone can escape the hectic pace of the metropolis and reconnect with nature. Because I knew there would be a long walk before the dive, I made sure to grab my Steel 80 tank. It's a lot more compact than the Steel 100s that I usually dive with. Still, it's about 87 degrees today and this trek is no joke. I sweat in. There's a second sign to the beach entrance up ahead. I see the water and most of the divers are already in. Time to inflate my vest to get ready for the surface swim. The jacks are less than 200 yards from the shoreline. This water is pretty refreshing after a long walk, but now I need the ocean to help take the pressure of this weight off of me. I still need to walk out further so that the water is high enough to lift the tank. Okay, much better. Now we float and kick out to the site. Who needs a gym when you beach dive? With about a 10 minute surface swim, we see the beginning of the Eurojax trail. Dive, dive, dive. The plan here is to explore the jacks and follow them east all the way to the park reef line. Mm -hmm. 
Many of the divers are here just to enjoy the dive, but there are a few also hunting for lobster. The Jacks is a great haven for many marine animals. If there are any lobster, they will be hiding at the base of the structure in the many crevices created by this artificial reef. The jacks were built as an erosion control experiment many years ago. The structure is now an artificial reef, theming with fish, lobster, coral, and sponges. It's a great site for photography and fish identification. The depths vary from about 16 to 26 feet, making this an appropriate dive site for scuba divers, free divers, and snorkelers at any level. The doctor fish can vary slightly in its overall color. It can change from blue-gray to dark brown and pale or darken dramatically. The pale color phase is seen over sandy bottoms, while the dark color phase is commonly observed over reefs. We've made it to the end of the trail, where the jacks meets the reef line. The reef runs north to south, parallel to the beach. We turn to follow the reef line headed north. This will take us back to our original entry point at the bridge, eliminating the walk back, and there are lots of ledges along the way with the potential of finding some spiny lobster for dinner.
It's just about time to head back. I set my compass due west to navigate back to shore.
let's take a look at the catch we have this guy here the slipper lobster still alive yeah they're gonna be alive Woo! <laughs> I'll see you guys in the kitchen. What's up ladies and gents? I'm here in the kitchen today whipping up some lobster. We're gonna put them on the fire. Um, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm gonna put a few on the stove and the rest are gonna go on the grill. So for right now, I'm gonna do like a rosemary infused pan seared lobster tails. Check it out. So some garlic in there. understand what a difference this makes on the lobster It's grilling time. All right, folks, once this lobster is done, I'm gonna bring um, some of my mutton snapper and put it on the grill, get that nice grill flavor on my fish. Nothing like it. Oh, 
Okay guys, the three pieces of this mutton snapper is on the grill now. I just put this one in so the butter hasn't fully melted yet. That's the head, that's the tail, and that's the center. It smells so good. Looky here, looky here. Fire burn. Uh oh. Right, people last but not least we're gonna grill some asparagus I think I lost one 